Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO WrestleCast. This is the WrestleCast. This is the prediction show for Impact Sacrifice. It's the two-man power trip. Hey. Also, I, I will. I will. I will always be your Stone Cold Steve Austin. All right, as long as you be my Triple H. Always. Also, God, I love that shirt. Spoiler club. That's fantastic. I'm gonna reference that later today. Yes. Uh, this is this is the new official. Uh, PWO prediction show shirt that I will be repping. I so love it. <laughs> you can also get your official podcast board order merchandise. Check the link in the comment and in, in, in the description box below. Yeah, we got some fun stuff. I know I designed all of it, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about including our sacrifice tonight. <laughs> I was about to say, we're here to tell you guys about uh, Sacrifice happening in a couple hours, I swear. This one snuck up on me. Uh, and there's nine matches on this card. No, mm-hmm. we talked about it. They, they only had five before Tuesday, and then it all happened. Um, so we're gonna start- yeah, very, very quick. We're going to start right now with the uh, intergender tag match that's going to happen here, which is... Kind of weird title on it. The Havoc and Nevea are teaming up versus Tennille Dashwood and Caleb with a K. Man. I don't know about this one. <laughs> um this is this is gonna be a pre-show match. Um it's not it's not official, but um um it it's gotta be given everything else that's on the card. Um this has this has havoc and Nevea win written all over it. Um, if you're keeping up with Impact, um, you know just heels keep going over, keep getting the last dig. This seems like um, a havoc and Nevea win for sure. Yeah, I can I can definitely get on board with that. I think this is definitely the all right. We're back on the same page now. Let's go on to our next feud. Um, yeah, next, I can't. I can't see anything else going on here. I got you. I got you. I'm noticing. I don't know if it's gonna come up in uh, in recording here. If you guys catch a minute where there's just a slight bit of silence, we're having a little delay. I think. Uh, Kai, I know you're on vacation. Oh so yeah, because doing the best you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the great in the great state of Pennsylvania, here with my wife and my son, um, trying to get you know just some time out of out of the norm. So um, very excited, still focused on um, a solid impact card, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So just a heads up, if you guys see a, a little bit of a delay, that's what's going on. I just got your text. <laughs> so that should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> uh <laughs> Up next, we have Decay, which is going to be Black Tauros and Crazy Steve uh, with Rosemary versus Reno Scum, Adam Thornstow, and Luster the Legend. I think this screams Decay victory here to me. Yeah, agreed. This also might be the pre-show match. Um, um, we, we've, we've been using Reno Scum as of late kind of as enhancement talent. Um, they were the first... Um, you know, they ate the pin against Finn Juice, um, and they should eat the uh, pin to decay here as well. Um, Black, they should let Black, Black to Roos just carry this match and just let him go the F off because he has done nothing but impress since he's gotten to impact. And I was a little skeptical because if you – I mean, I know that you remember, um, you know, the late 2000s TNA days, um, even when it transitioned into like the Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff era, um, where you just have these crazy over the top characters and they would have one or two matches and you would never see them again. Um, WCW went through the same kind of rut uh, there towards the end of, you know, their run, um, which is why this has been so shockingly incredible to watch um and for a thicker body he he can move and yeah, that's the best part um yeah i think this just screams i think decay's gonna get a tag title shot here soon uh, i'm not sure if it's gonna be immediately but i definitely think we're moving towards decay versus the good brothers 
I think they're going to be someone who I don't think Decay will get the belts, but I think someone to, uh, you know, challenge before getting put back down a little bit. Agreed. Up next, we have Chris Saban and James Storm with Jake something versus Violent by Design. This will be Diener and Joe Doring with Eric Young. Kind of surprised Eric Young's not competing in this match. I thought maybe Joe Doring would be on the outside looking in. Uh, figured we'd probably have a better work rate with that. But I this will still be a fun. I think you need VBD to go over here. I hate to agree because I feel like Saban and Storm have been eating a lot of pins as of late. Um, not taking away anything they're doing in ring. But you like to see a team like that get a win, especially, you know, since they've kind of just been thrown together. But it also could be because um, they don't want to invest anything into them, knowing that we should be close to a return from Alex Shelley. Um, and we're kind of bouncing from feud to feud because we were just feuding with Rohit Raju and um, the last Ring King World Heavyweight Champion, Mahabali Shera. Um, so it seems like we're kind of just moving week by week, kind of anticipating uh, the guns to get back together. So um, I, co- I, I completely agree. This should be a VBD win. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think this will be a fun one, but I definitely think this screams heel victory. I think we're going to see a lot of that tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, up next, Eddie Edwards versus Brian Myers in a hold harmless match. Uh, <laughs> they got one over here on Brian Myers here. Brian Myers thought this was going to be a submissions match. No, this is a, essentially an Extreme Rules. How many different names can we give an Extreme Rules match? <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, agreed. <laughs> this is, um, I is, has Matt Cardona officially signed to, oh, wait, no, this is not Matt Cardona. Uh, sorry. Um, this screams Brian Myers win to me because, um, I think it's, I think it's just time, um, for Eddie Edwards to kind of be off of TV for a while. The character is just so old at this point. And I know I might be in the minority here, um, but it's, you know, we're building him up, you know, for a couple of weeks to be a main event guy. And then the next couple of weeks he's jobbing out or, you know, he's eating a couple pins in a row. So I, I don't even think impact knows what to do with Eddie Edwards. Um, but this just screams shenanigans to me. It screams, Maybe a Hernandez run in or a Matt Cardona run in. Um, so I've got Myers for the win. Yeah, I agree with that. I think maybe Matt Cardona accidentally cost Eddie Edwards here. Like maybe he mm-hmm. goes to hit Brian Myers, but Myers ducks or something along those lines. Um, Love it. Yeah, I think that's the best bet. I really think we're moving towards Cardona versus Brian Myers at, at uh, Rebellion. I think that's the next match. Yeah. And um, I don't think Cardona is signed yet, correct? No, at least not that I'm aware of. Yeah, so that's so that's kind of my thinking here, and that'll depend, you know, and the way I think they'll book this moving forward will depend on that, because I think if they can get him signed, Cardona would go over. Um, but if not, I think they would expect Cardona to be on his back on the way out. Um, but... I guess, I guess we'll see. I also have another theory here in that maybe, just maybe, <clears throat> Matt Cardona turns heel here and we reform the tag team because we need a top-tier tag team in the tag division here. That'd be great. I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know, I know, you know, there's not a lot of tag team action and impact which is you know why i've kind of anxiously been waiting for more AEW teams to make the jump maybe teams are not using teams from dark um but i would love to see that like you said it adds another tag team to the mix um especially since they've worked together in the past it would be at least a solid team that you know you can get solid work rate out of 
And they bring a lot of size to that division already. I mean, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers, weirdly enough, look like some of the bigger guys on roster. So I think that'd be a good spot for them as well. Agreed. All right, up next, the X Division titles on the line. It's TJP versus Ace Austin with Madman Fulton. And I really want to sit here and tell you guys that Ace Austin is going to win this match, but the way they had this Josh Alexander segment on Tuesday, I think TJP is going over here, which is a shame because Ace Austin Uh. should win. Um, absolutely agree. Ace Austin should go over here. He is a top level talent. Um, I wish, and the only way I could see this being being a long term benefit is that we eventually get the Josh Alexander X, X Division title win, kind of cementing um his status as you know like a singles competitor, you know for be- from being with the North for so long, um. And moving Ace Austin to more of a main event player. I think he has got the charisma. He is great on promos. And this is not the first time we've said this on the show, any of us. I think nobody at this point can deny the talent that Ace Austin has. So either we're going to pull the trigger here and give him the X Division title, or if we don't, he needs to be in a main event kind of role because I he's young but I don't think anybody wants to see his younger years wasted kind of just eating loss after loss agreed I think at this point also I I mean you guys are on the show who you hear us all the time I'm done with the TJP title run um I, I don't know if maybe we even get a heel Josh Alexander costing TJP here but I just I don't see that happening at this moment a lot of heels in the X division at the moment. So I think we definitely need some faces there, especially if we're going to move the belt off of Ace Austin or uh, onto Ace Austin. But I just don't see it happening here. Maybe, maybe we get some kind of BS and we'll get the rematch. It's at a uh, rebellion. I keep wanting to say sacrifice. Yeah. Would you say that there's possible shenanigans? Shenanigans. <laughs> Uh, all right. Shut it again. <laughs> Up next, we have the Impact Tag Team uh, titles on the line. It's the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson mm-hmm. versus Finn Juice, David Finley, and Juice Robinson. And let me tell you here why the Good mm-hmm. Brothers are going over. Uh, because. Because. Uh, I, honestly, I just think it makes too much sense for him to go over here. I really think you're going to have the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega holding all the gold here very, very soon. So that's just what I think. Um, I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to say yeah. Finn Juice by hook or by crook gets it, and here's why. Um, you're going to have David Finley with the Impact World Tag Team Championship in the New Japan Cup, winning at least another round, surprisingly. Um, You know, if you – because – and if you haven't seen our New Japan Cup, you know, kind of prediction show, go watch that, come back to this point. Um, David David Finley is going to go over uh, Yoshihashi. And I know that's a bold prediction, but, um, you know, I know, I know you're a day behind <laughs> on, on, New, on New Japan stuff, um, but his promo is, this morning was absolutely great and incredible. And it makes it sound like he's going to get at least another win or two, um, you know, mentioning that he won – the New Japan Cup U USA, or he was, or he was in the finals. I'm sorry, um, but what, but, but what great exposure, you know, what a great investment, you know, to put the tag team titles on New Japan guys, then put the titles in the New Japan Cup to be displayed. Um, 
I have no problem with a situation like this where they can drop him here at sacrifice and all three where you have the good brothers and Kenny Omega win all the gold standing taller rebellion in a case like this. I don't really think it's a, you know, a short term tight title reign because of 50, 50 booking. I think if you want to establish a working relationship, you kind of have to show that trust. Um, and what bigger trust and, you know, than to put the titles very briefly onto Finn Juice. So that's my pick. Um, although I don't have a problem if the Good Brothers retain here. I just – I don't think they'd have them um, – because here's the thing also, though. You would need Juice and Finley to bring the belts with them to Japan and not put them out sure. on display until sacrifice happens. I, mm. I just almost feel like there's a whole lot of logistic issues there, you know? It's fair. Um, especially considering like with how much people report on it, I almost, I, I would almost tell you that we would have had reports that they've had the belts in Japan by now, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, something would have come up, but what, what one can hope, you know, just, so, just something a little different, I guess. And, you know, for as good as the good brothers have been with their vignettes and their promo work, their in-ring stuff, you know, they are older. They are not the early 2010s Bullet Club ver- version of, of, of themselves. Um, the work rate has suffered a little bit. It's very much so cookie cutter. This, these are the spots and the moves we're going to hit and we're going to get out. Um, but like I said, one can only hope. That's fair. That's fair. All right, up next we have the Impact Knockouts Championship on the line. It's Deanna Perazzo defending her belt against ODB. We can keep this one pretty mm-hmm. quick. I mean, mm-hmm. look, it's Perazzo. It's Perazzo. Yeah. It's the best thing going today. Yeah, um, well, I, I'm not a huge fan of her having whatever stable she has right now. Like there's without a doubt, like she's Susan. one of the top female talents in the yeah, Susan. She's one of the um, Diana Perazzo is one of the top female talents in the world right now, and some people may have a hard time grasping that concept because it's not Charlotte Flair and it's not um, Hikaru Shida. Um, not to you know throw shade at any of them, but Diana Perazzo since. Signing with Impact, it has been one of the best women's talents in the world. And there's no reason to stop that train. Agreed. Agreed wholeheartedly. Um, I got a feeling like this just this has to be coming up for a rematch with Jordan Grace, yeah. Um maybe. I mean, I know they could go the jazz route. But once again, I just I don't see that happening here. Um, I'm gonna kind of show my hand here for a hot second. I don't know who they're going to have um, fight for the title next because um, I'm actually predicting a knockouts women tag team title change here. Okay, all right. Um, um, so I don't I I don't know if they would have either Jordan Grace or Jazz double dip. Um, but I think, I think if anybody's capable of it, definitely Jordan Grace, um, another potential, um, woman to kind of step in would be if you really want to open that AEW door, um, you know, there, I mean, it almost seems like overnight the AEW women's division is kind of, kind of blossomed a little bit. Um, yeah. And it, it, and it might be because we put all of these women in this in this tournament, and they all looked good, all of them. <sighs> yeah. Um, well, you know, here let's go ahead and head towards our next match here, so I can explain what I think is going to happen here. Because I think Fire and Flavor are going to retain the Impact Knockouts Tag Titles against Jordan Grace and Jazz due to some shenanigans from Susan and Kimberly. Mm. Um, 
I, I just I feel like it's gonna continue to be the you guys took our spot, so you can't have it till we have it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, but no, e- even if it's uh, um, and I know Rebellion is going to be a you know pretty big pay per view as far as impact goes, and we'll get to that here in um, a moment or so. But you know, even if we send um, you know somebody like you know like a you know Ty Conti over, or even or even a Layla Hirsch, I even think Layla Hirsch versus Deanna Peraza would be great. Um, Layla Hirsch is more than a capable worker, and she's shown it. Even though she hasn't had many wins to her credit, um, she is one of the more competent women's workers on Dark. You could even send a Red Velvet over if you want to, you know, kind of have Deanna Peraza establish her dominance a bit. Um, But that is why I think Jordan and Jazz will be your new knockouts tag team champions. We need we need something new, and I don't think that <laughs> Fire and Flava are really using this platform to elevate themselves. Um, I think I disagree, but I, I see what you're saying. Hear me out here. What if... The AEW versus Impact World Champion, Champion versus Champion match at Rebellion is not the only Champion versus Champion match. And I'm not thinking Hikaru Shida. You're thinking Serena Deeb? I'm thinking Serena Deeb, who's not been on TV here for a minute. Um, it also could be because maybe they wanted to have a rest before um, before the NWA pay a uh, pay per view here next next week, um, because if if you don't know, NWA is making their triumphant return, and that would be uh, March twenty first back back for the attack. Already next some weekend, names baby. announced for that show. That is next weekend. Unfortunately, it's the same weekend as Fastlane, so you know what you're watching already. So um, we already have some names kind well, of also, wait, wait, wait. In, but The um, NWA pay-per-view is at four. Fastlane is at seven. So you already know what not to watch. Um, so here's the thing. We don't have any women's matches announced yet, which is kind of bothersome. But, you know, looking at the state of NWA um, – the last time they had a main show, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of women to pluck from, you know, the talent pool was not as deep as even impact. Um, You know, I mean, you know, you had your Camille and you had jazz for a brief period of time. Um, But that would be great if we're really going to bridge the gap up there between NWA to AW and then AW to impact just bridge the gap over you know and then i mean i think that would be a great match i mean serena deeb um defending against yana perrazzo um they're both great in-ring technicians so i would be ball game for that if you really want to like put out there that you have the best women's action let them go to a time limit draw. Oh, you don't. Have, you have no idea the things that get me going in professional wrestling. Use useful time limit draws and th- and three way dances, and yeah. you've got yourself a solid show already. All right, all right. Let's go to the main event here because it's Rich Swan defending the uh, Impact yeah. World Championship. Versus Moose, who's defending the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. It is title for title to unify the belts. All right. So I'm going to introduce to you two different scenarios. All right. Because we've been talking now for a while about uh, apparently this match is already done. Everything else has been taped. Um, And the report is, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and say spoiler club. 
spoiler warning if you don't want to hear this fast forward about 30 to 40 seconds rich swan supposedly wins this match now hear me out we have no idea how he wins this match and i don't think this happens clean i think kenny omega has to get involved here and uh, you know I was sitting here going, I have such a hard time seeing Rich Swan beating Moose clean. What would be a bigger match than Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega? And it would be a three way dance for all three belts at Rebellion. I was about to say, I'm coming at you hard here. I'm getting both of you. Both your loves here. I'm so happy right now that you're saying this. Yeah. Um, my, only, my only concern is I can very well easily see AEW going, well, you guys, you have two guys in the championship match. And we only have one for AEW. We got to send one guy over for this match. Which maybe would be a great time for an impact legend to make a return for the first time in forever. <laughs> Christian Cage. Yeah. 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 Right. This is a great I fantasy could, book. Let's well, get be real upset when just rich one wins clean. And I'm going to be upset. Uh, yeah. Um, I really am hoping that impact has gone the AEW route and even though this is leaked, they figure out some way to change the finish. Um, because I, I, I think we all know what the end game is. And that is Kenny Omega with all the belts, right? All the gold. Belt collector. So, so here's my only thing is, and this has been the big question for at least a month or so now, is that is that what is Moose's contract status? Because my theory is if Moose is on the way out of impact, absolutely go out on your back. Rich Swan will figure out a way uh, by hook or by crook to retain and win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Um, If Moose somehow is staying with impact, um, I could easily see them headlining Rebellion with a 20-plus minute impact classic between Moose and Kenny Omega. And I think if you're looking at it on the surface, what match is, and you know, taking you know Tony Schiavone's words, you know, what's going to put butts in the seats? Is it going to be Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega, or? you know, moves versus Kenny Omega. And for me personally, it's moves versus Kenny Omega. And I don't think that was displayed better um, than the six-man tag match that we saw at the beginning of the year, hard to kill. Um, yep. Moose is a star. He's an he's a bona fide star. Um, I think his rightful place is in impact. Um, how, however, Matthew stole my prediction. It's going to be a double down. It's going to be a double count out or a draw or no contest, however you want to write it. It's going to be a triple threat because here's the thing. Even if you're going to sign Moose just to get you through the rebellion, you know, you if, if you want to have a triple threat match, don't have Moose involved in the finish. It's very easy. And the, and the reason, reason I thought of this was because making the five hour drive to Pittsburgh last night, um, I, we ended up because wife had never heard the talk is Jericho interview with John Moxley and Mox shared a story where he was filming um, the uh, video um, that was kind of announcing his uh, you know, debut at impact or not impact. Sheesh. Um, Day at you know his debut double or nothing, and it was you know the cage and you know the prison yard 
uh, the jail cell, all, all that stuff. And on the shoot, um, Mox says that Vince called him to go on a last shield reunion tour through Europe. Um, and it was, and Vince wanted to just sign him through that to get them to the next step, um, which obviously he declined and here we are, you know, but that's what got me thinking about this a little more um, because originally I was just going to go with, you know, whatever, whatever Dave Meltzer says and that, and that's fine. Um, but the more I think about this, uh, how do we elevate and protect Moose at the same time? Get them all in a match, make it a triple threat, don't have him eat the pin at Rebellion. Kenny Omega still retains, he still wins all of the titles, he's still the belt collector, everybody wins. And then from there, whatever Moose wants to do, okay, fine. But at least we're putting on a match that people want to see. I think if you just put Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega at the main event at Rebellion, I, I think that people will be less likely to tune in for the wrestling and more so for the finish when Kenny Omega wins. But if you're throwing Moose into everything, I mean, what's to say they won't do a 180 and have Moose pin Rich Swan? At least there's that intrigue factor where anything could happen at that point. Um, so I guess long story short, um, I'm, I'm calling for a no contest or a draw here in the main event. Um, people will boo um, and, that's, and that's fine. But let's think, let, let's think about the long game for a second. I'm sorry, one more time. I was saying, let's just think about the long game for a second, um, and how and what we want to see in in the end. Nah, I'm with you. I'm with you on this, um, especially because I think last I read, you know, Moose's contract doesn't expire until August. That's plenty of time. That's plenty of time. Even if he doesn't re-sign, and we don't necessarily want to put the belt on him immediately here. You know, we, we can use the promise of him having a run as being the guy who beat Kenny Omega as a reason to resign. Oh, yeah. He'll push. If he doesn't, we can still have him lose to Kenny Omega in a loser leaves the company match. Uh, so many different routes we can roll here. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a pretty decent show. I'm not thinking it's going to be a world beater by any means. Um, I'm going to watch it on tape delay because I have to celebrate my sister's birthday today. But uh, Happy birthday, Kay. Happy birthday, Kay. You got a shout out on the show. Don't call me when we're recording, but I love you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be very curious to see what happens. I'm going to watch it tomorrow morning. Um, I'll be excited. You can get my real opinions. Real quick. Um, Slammiversary typically is in june but the last couple of years they've held it in july so i'm almost thinking if we want to do this the long way there's always other options there's always an option c so i'm excited i think it'll be a fun show i think it should be fun uh, with that, Khan, hit him with the plug. Hey, there we go. Um, just got some new equipment in, so expect some new videos popping up. Um, expect us on Facebook Live and YouTube at some point on Monday um, because we will be out of studio, but we're also both off. So this is going to be great and incredible. Um, maybe we'll get a uh, creative control this week question mark i'm really yeah there's gonna be a lot of great stuff happening um but yeah go and check out the youtube page go check out the new japan cup prediction um go tell us what we got right what we got wrong what you want to see um and then ab after that click the description box 
And go check out our Kofi page at Kofi.com slash PWO123. It's as easy as one, two, three. And for just the amount of cup of coffee every single day, you can support great shows like this and ensure that you are getting your fill of all things professional wrestling here at PWO. I love it. Guys, enjoy Sacrifice. We'll see you back here uh, Monday. I'm sure we'll probably have a uh, video up for uh, reviews, talking about it. We'll have some Spoiler Club info there. Spoiler Club. So, uh, I can't wait. I think we're having a fun week. So, everyone, enjoy your weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Goodbye and good night. Bang. Are we doing the unbox?